Hey, how y'all doing? This is uh, Josh from uh, Keep It Tacky. And what I want to talk to you guys about today is just, I just want to go over uh, uh, basic website setup. Um, this will be a, a short video. I just wanted to show you guys how to set up a basic website and get it running. Um, and you can start uh, modifying it and, and uh, uploading images and all that. Um, it's very simple. Uh, just need a couple dollars and, and you'll be good to go. Alright. Um, first I want to talk about uh, the domain domain name. And uh, what a domain name is, it's it's basically a name that uh, that translate the uh, IP address because every computer and every server out there has an IP address. Um, well, the domain name translates uh, is translated through the DNS server to uh, tell whoever requests that domain uh, the server information and where to download that website using your browser. So. Uh, most of you guys already know that uh, if you don't just look it up uh, you can go on godaddy.com and it'll explain uh, you could just search domain name and it will bring up the wiki and you guys will be able to figure out what it is but anyway uh, what I use is uh, godaddy.com that's why I buy all my domain names from um, and um, you know it's just basically godaddy.com um, I'm already logged in. Uh, but anyway, you can search whatever name you want to name, like, uh, and just see if it's out there. Uh, like, let's say you want to look up hacksomething.com and just see if it's uh, available. You can just type hacksomething.com, hit search domain, and it'll tell you if that's available. And right now, hacksomething.com is taken. And it's that meaning that means it's owned by somebody. So, but if you have a you know an idea for a website, just just search. You could possibly get like a different uh, extension on it. Uh, they got hacksomething.net is available. So, if you want to do that, you know it's that's that's on you. You know, it's all about getting and with that domain names, it's all about getting stuff that people can easily remember. Um, you know, make it short as possible, but uh, something people can easily remember, so they can, you know, quickly search it, find it. Anyway, um, so once you find that perfect domain name, uh, yeah, we could just keep at something.com. You just go through and purchase it. Uh, most of the time, it's like twelve bucks for the year, and then they give you more deals based on. Uh, on um, how many years you sign up for for the domain name because I mean it's, it's almost like a lease really you're leasing it for a year or leasing it for a certain certain amount of time uh, because it's owned by uh, I mean it's managed by I forget the name of it uh, if you guys want to look it up you can look it up but uh, I just normally go through order what I want I don't Get into the web security there is some stuff out there that blocks your uh, information because when you buy a domain name that puts your information out there so if you search like one of my domain names uh, you can actually see my name and you have to keep this information up to up to date uh, like your uh, contact phone number but anyways I mean there's other sites out there you can buy domain names from but like I said, I normally use GoDaddy, which I mean, I never had a problem. And just to show you what the what it looks like in the inside, um, as far as managing dom your domains, because that's one thing you need to go to manage your domain. Once you buy a domain, you just uh, find it. It's gonna populate in your list of domains, and if you only have one, it'll just be one here. Like you can see mine, keep it techy. Uh, just click on it. And what you want to do is you want to manage the DNS zone. And what that does is points it to the server where your website will be hosted. Like right now, mine is on GoDaddy server. It's pointing to a GoDaddy server. So if I was to go to keepitechie.com, 
is pointing to GoDaddy's uh, server, so it's gonna bring up a GoDaddy page by default or whatever. See if it even comes up. Yeah, it, I gotta probably flush my DNS. Uh, that's why it's not coming up, but it normally will show up the GoDaddy page or something. But anyway, so the next thing I wanted to get into was hosting, uh, which this rolls right into. Um, like I said, you have to go into under DNS zone zone file. That's that's basically your zone file that you have on the uh, GoDaddy's registry or whatever. And it's basically a file that holds the IP address where the website is at. So I'm gonna go down and change mine because I uh, I'm go I'm actually gonna point this to my uh, let's see if I can let me switch to my other uh, domain and get the IP address. But I have hosting with a different company now. You can host with um with GoDaddy if you want to but I mean it it all depends on who you want to host with I mean it, it really doesn't matter they all do the same thing and they offer the same like front end I want to show you guys that as well I'm gonna show you that uh, a little later uh, but um, so anyway uh, your host file I mean your DNS file what you want to do is you want to set up well point it to the hosting server and what I did was I went to one of my other domains where I know because I, I host everything through HostGator um, I have a HostGator account I have a couple websites there that I host and so basically you go in edit the zone record this is the at record which stands for the it's the main host record um, and it points it to the IP address that you want so simple enough put it in there hit finish um, hit save changes and you are good to go it takes a little while to update because it has to update all the DNS servers and all that stuff uh, like I said it takes up 48 hours to reflect the changes uh, but it sometimes it doesn't take that long sometimes you just have to flush your DNS uh, I'm using Linux so it's a little bit different but all you Windows users you know it'll uh, you know, if you're on my page you know how to do IP config forward slash flush DNS and uh, you should pop up with the URL uh, right away um, so anyway uh, so now keep it techie.com is should be pointed to my hostgator account <clears throat> All right, so we're done there. That's the first step on setting up a website. You gotta buy the domain name, like I said, and point it to your hosting service, wherever you're paying for hosting. All right, so now you wanna go to your hosting, to your hosting uh, account. And like I said, I host to uh, HostGator. They send you a separate link to your HostGator uh, login page for cPanel. And cPanel is the uh, website that you use to uh, basically set up your website, set up the files for your website. And what hosting is basically um, is where all the files for your for your website are stored. And when somebody types in your domain name, it hits the DNS server. The DNS server converts uh, the name into an IP address the I and then it points to the IP address and that IP address is to your hosting account your hosting server and once you uh once you set all that up set up all your files in the back end it will then render the website to the user or whoever is trying to access your website that's basically how it works um, so, like right now, I'm in my cPanel. Uh, this is basically what it looks like. It's not, uh, it's not that hard to use. Um, you just gotta kind of know what you're doing a little bit. Um, 
and I'm not gonna get too depth in this in too in depth in this um, SSL certificates you could do that um, that's secure site um, got your email you can manage all your email accounts here um, you can use your domain name and create your own email address uh, let's see what else and they have some SEO tools different tools out there now the file manager that's uh, that's where you can actually see all your files to the website so it creates a home directory it's all Unix based um, and it creates you a home directory uh, based on your main um, domain name which is fine um, and all of your websites should be stored under a public HTML so if you click on there you'll see you'll see all your websites in there because when you create a website it creates a folder with the website name I don't mind you guys looking at this stuff it's been hacked already I got a lot of shit in here to to uh, defend against stuff so I'm not tripping about it um, so as of right now you can see that uh, I don't have any um, any folder for uh, keep it techie man so what that means is I haven't created the website so this will already this like I said in cPanel it's pretty easy they have uh, um, wizards that will actually install the website for you and um, I just want to talk about the different types of websites they got out there well different types of, uh, of uh, website applications you can use um, and maybe that's not the right word, but that's what I call it. It's an application. You install it on the server and, and it creates and it helps you create the website so you don't have to build all the code, write all the code from scratch. Uh, and a few of those that I've used personally is uh, Joomla and uh, WordPress as well as Magento. Uh, WordPress and Joomla, they are a... a um, basically a content uh, open source content management system and they're based based in PHP and MySQL which is what's used in, in Linux MySQL not Microsoft but MySQL it's open source uh, database um, it's out there um, and so um, Magento is an open source uh, e-commerce now it's a platform. It's it's based in PHP as well. Um, it's I mean, but that one is specifically for uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, I can't think right now. I'm having a brain fort. Um, E-commerce, e-commerce. So anyway, um, if you like want to set up an online store. That's a good way to do it using Magento. It has a lot of tools in the back end that helps you track all your inventory, track all the money that's coming in, print invoices, all that type of stuff. It's it's pretty cool. Well, anyway, what I wanted to say in cPanel, they have something called the, and I can't find it right now. It's called Site Builder. Should be here. Where the fuck is it? Oh, quick install. Sorry. Quick install. Yeah. So uh it uses your uh C panel. It's 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 an add on, some software service that's added onto your account with uh with um when you buy a C panel from HostGator. Which is pretty cool. It uses your account. So basically, you can create a website strictly from here. Doesn't take long at all. Uh, you can select what type of website you want to do. Let's see, my installs. Let's go into my installs. Uh, it doesn't say, uh, let's see, my purchases, account settings. Uh, my installs. Hmm. 
one click install so you click there and you can go down and select which one you want to install like I said there's other content management sites out there Drupal uh, WordPress uh, yeah you can install WordPress install Joomla Magento is here too um, Concrete 5 I haven't used that um, and it's something that you can buy for for price or whatever no these are themes I'm sorry it's going into themes because they do sell themes on here that's where they make their money you buy the platform or the the uh, actual application so to speak and then you can go in and buy your theme for it and you can change that theme up the way you want to there's also free themes out there um, it's not too much to choose from because they have to make money some kind of way so they have to sell either extensions and and it's a lot of like free developer I mean developers out there like uh, guys that are just out there developing extensions and different things for websites and they sometimes put them up there for free some of it's not uh, but um, it's not that hard to kind of take one of those basic free themes and um, and modify it the way you want to you just have to learn a little code a little HTML CSS um, and uh, just learn how to manipulate the system because it's but but anyway like I was saying it's very easy to do so I'm going to install a WordPress site uh, just as an example so you guys can see I'm going to install a WordPress site on for Keep It Techie. Um, install WordPress. Uh, let's see. Oh, forgot one step. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, first step really is I have to add a domain. So under cPanel, you first have to add that domain. That way it'll know that you do have a domain there um, so just type in your domain name that you purchased at uh, keepatechie.com keepatechie.com that's what I'm gonna put um, dot com make sure you put dot com uh, It'll automatically create your FTP user. You can use the same name. That's fine. Um, and it also creates your folder. This is where it creates your folder. Good to go. And then you also want to create a password. And this is actually the password for the FTP uh, server. And what FTP stands for is File Transfer, Transfer Protocol. It's basically a protocol where it used to transfer files back and forth. Um, on a on a remote server. So set up password. Oh, and most of the time I do a password uh, generator. So I generate a password for it. Um, kind of makes it more secure. So use that, uh, and then add domain. And once that's done. You get to go. Let's see. Internet's kind of slow. Okay, cool. So, Chrome, I don't want to save it. Alright, good to go. So, Keep It Techie is the username. So, I'm going to paste my uh, password right fast so I don't forget it. I'm going to need it for later. Uh, and if I don't remember it, I can always delete it and create another one. But I want to keep this thing private. Um, and what I use is a program called KeyPass. Um, it's 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 a program where you can store all your passwords in one one place. I'll do a video on that later. Uh, so yeah, let me make sure I put FTP. FTP login keepatechie.com K 
Techie. It Techie.com. Bang. Good to go. Alright, so let's go back. Done with that. Uh, and as you can see, it is now part of our domain list. So it's been added. And it's and if we go back, we go to the home and go back. I'm gonna just quickly do this and go back to the uh, file manager. Let's go to the home directory again. Let's look at the public HTML file. HTML folder, I'm sorry, directory. Uh, and we should see keepitechy.com. Yep, there we go. Created the folder. And as you can see, nothing is in it but our FTP quota and all that stuff. Just some config files for FTP. So, that's done. So, when we get in here to. Uh, I may have to refresh this page. Let's refresh. Let's reload it. All right, WordPress. So we want to install WordPress. We go down here. We should be able to select that domain now. See, keepitechie.com. Uh, install path to here. We put uh, the install path, which is public HTML. Keepitechie.com. Bam. Good to go. So we put that in there. Um. <coughs> admin email um, I kind of keep them all the same I use the same email address my same gmail account that um, pretty good um, blog title keep it tech bitch or right, keep it tech gotcha uh, and then See admin user, let's just name it admin. Uh, and I'll just put my name, that's fine. Josh Lacey. Bam. Cool. And then all we have to do is hit install WordPress. It pops up with some shit. Something went wrong. Click the drop down and see what happened. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. I don't have to put his path. I just thought about that. Cause this fine. This automatically knows what the path is based on the domain name. Cause the domain name is tied to the path in the file explorer. So I forgot. I don't have to do that. Uh, so we just click uh, install WordPress. No thanks, I'm a web designer. Look at that. Your your install is running. We give you details. And then it pops up saying that your installation is complete. And you can view your credentials. Alright. Um and so our WordPress site is that. Our password is that. It creates it generates a a password tells you what the username is and all that stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna copy all that out as well. And what I like to do is keep a, um, a um, text file with all the information for this site uh, until I add it to my key pass. Um, it's pretty simple. All right, and it's that's done. So once we got our um, username and password, it'll automatically take you to the, well, not automatically. I'm having fucking problems. Reload. Might be all my ad blocker stuff. Let's see. Uh, let me turn all this off. Let's go to settings. Extensions. Let me turn off this shit. A lot of this stuff is blocking this. This is what I use for security. I use a lot of little apps in Chromium to um, mask who I am and all that stuff. So well, it should go now. 
Uh, it's not going yet. It's pointing to my. Uh, I don't know where it's pointing right now. I'm gonna have to flush the DNS um, on my Linux box. Can't remember how to do it right now at the moment. Uh, anyway, once that's done, once it's uh, complete, installing 90% of the time, it will automatically show up with your with your website. Kind of like, uh, let's see, I did another one. Let's see, HMAC. I actually started working on a, uh, I don't know if you know the Delta organization, um, the, one of those uh, sororities or whatever. Anyway, um, one of their chapters, so to speak, in a particular area, um, they, in Texas, in Texas somewhere, they wanted me to create them a, uh, or recreate their website. So I created them. Well, I created them a site, but I hadn't started working on it because they hadn't given me any of the information they needed or what they wanted on the site. So anyway, I created the site, and this is what it will show up once you finish your installation. And I just wanted to show you that because I knew I hadn't modified this site yet. So anyway, it just puts a base install, uh, and then there is an administrator backend. Um, link that you click on and it has a login so I'm going to just use uh, I know what this one is Joomler uh, uh, yeah and this is a Joomler install so uh, oh crap I don't have the I gotta find the password for it I don't know what the password is for this one uh, let's see Keypass, keypass. There we go. Keypass. So yeah, this password is in my keypass, which I'm looking on my other screen, so you guys can't see that. But um, let's see websites. Here we go. Uh, HMAC Delta. There we go. All right, so here we go. Got my password. So anyway, this is the admin back end. Now I'm not gonna go through all this. Um, if you guys want to really want to learn Joomla or WordPress, uh, you're just gonna have to to look it up. I may do some videos later on in the, in the future on changing things. Like right now, I'm just gonna. I'm installing an update and what you want to do is that's one main thing you want to do is you want to make sure you update your websites because um, they're always having vulnerabilities out there that people find in code because this 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 uh, software is open source people are writing this uh, just regular old people are writing this this is not a corporation um, but anyway you always want to update your update your websites like I said, it's a it's a content management. You can go in and create articles, uh, publish those articles, uh, manage the menu. I mean, it's everything is in here for you to do uh, for to create a, a website. And you can add extensions to it, modules, plugins, templates. Uh, like I said, you can buy the templates, and a lot of templates when you buy them, you can. Uh, uh, it comes with plugins and modules that will help you uh, with whatever you whatever you're trying to create. So anyway, um, that'll wrap this video up. Uh, you guys, any got any questions? Uh, leave your comments at the bottom, and um, and also please like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing a lot of tech videos uh, in the future. Um, I'm just starting out, as you can see, this is my first video. But um, I'm going to get it together um, and uh, look forward to, to um, enjoying this journey together with you guys. Um, and um, keep it techy.
said, Jordan, trolling the crowd. She's a cheap.